What's going on guys, it's Electro, and I'm here to give you my item tier list for the upcoming patch 9.14. There have been a lot of changes to items and I've spent a lot of hours playtesting them on the PBE and doing research to make this tier list as accurate as possible. I will list my S to D tiers and give an in-depth analysis as to why each item is in the spot that it is in. I will be ranking these items based on their overall versatility and ability to fit into a vast majority of team comps. Some items might be broken in one specific comp, but are overall mediocre in others. Finally, before I get into the tier list, I want to say that if this video hits 50 likes, I will make an in-depth item guide for each class in the game, highlighting the primary curries you want to put the items on, and what items you should be prioritizing. Now without further ado, let's get into the item tier list. Starting off in the S tier, we have Force of Nature, Phantom Dancer, Rapid Fire Cannon, Spear of Shojin, Morello Namacon, Dragon's Claw, and Ginsu's Rageblade. Force of Nature is simply the most valuable item in the game because it gives you an extra unit on the field, which makes it easier to complete comps. Phantom Dancer is the best attack-based defensive item in the game because it causes all crits to miss, and since every champion has a 15% chance to crit, there is always value in building it. Rapid Fire Cannon causes attacks to never miss, so not only is it a counter to Phantom Dancer, it also works on the Yordle dodge buff and abilities like Shen's attack dodging field. Also, it lets Nelly paw at the sky, which is always nice. Spear of Shoujin is simply the most necessary item for almost any unit that uses mana, and I would argue that it is the most versatile item in the game. I would recommend buying Spear every opportunity you get, just don't accidentally put it on a character without mana, and let's be honest, people do that way more than you'd think. Morello Nomicon is getting changed this patch, making the burn deal 15% of the enemy's max health over 5 seconds, also completely nullifying healing. Throw this bad boy on any unit with an AoE ulti, and there's no denying its place on the S tier. Dragon's Claw is the best pure defensive item in the game, as it gives the unit near immunity to magic damage, and when paired with Phantom Dancer, it's like trying to kill Dragon with a full Sorcerer comp, and I'm sure we all know what that's like. Ginsu's Rageblade was already a top tier item before 9.14, and now instead of it giving 3% bonus attack speed per stack, it gives 4% bonus attack speed, which basically makes it the best item DPS wise on auto attack based units. Now on to the A tier. For the A tier, we have Red Buff, Bloodthirster, Hextech Gunblade, Titanic Hydra, Seraph's Embrace, and Static Shiv. Red Buff received a similar change to Morello this patch, in that it now deals 13% of the enemy's max health damage over 5 seconds. However, it is not S tier because if it is not used in the Gunslinger comp, it can really only be procced on one target at a time, which reduces its overall value. Bloodthirster and Gunblade are pretty interchangeable in terms of value, especially now that Gunblade has received an 8% buff. Bloodthirster gives more healing on auto attack based units, whereas Gunblade is better on spellcasting units. However, with the strength of Morello and Red Buff this patch, I suspect them to be built so often that the value of healing items goes down significantly. Titanic Hydra is a solid item and is honestly probably one of the best items to put on your frontline and is also very strong on gunslingers. I think Titanic Hydra is extremely undervalued with how strong it is right now. Seraph's Embrace is an interesting one because it is an extremely strong item, but only on a few units. In general, Spear of Shoujin is just a better Seraph's Embrace, although a well-placed MF or Morgana could utilize this item to the fullest. Pretty much put Seraphs on any unit who needs to get their ult off early to have an impact. I was debating whether or not to put Static Shiv in the S tier, as it is becoming extremely popular right now for its ability to one-shot enemies in a Gunslinger comp. Even though it isn't very versatile in many comps, it is so strong in a Gunslinger comp and needs to at least be considered an A tier item. For B tier, we have a lot of items with the potential to be really strong, but have mostly been overshadowed by S and A tier items. Those items are Frozen Heart, Wormog's Armor, Thornmail, Rabadon's Death Gap, and Infinity Edge. The majority of the items in this tier have the potential to be strong, but are only really going to be picked in a few scenarios and aren't items you'll look to get every game. Frozen Heart and Warmogs both got sizable buffs this patch. Frozen Heart got a 5% buff to its attack speed reduction, whereas Warmogs got its healing per second doubled. 
Up until this patch, most of the pure defensive items were underwhelming, and really were only good if you got the item components to build them. Now with these buffs, I think we will start to see people building these items more, especially Wormogs, which could potentially be an A tier item, but it is currently uncertain. Thornmail is pretty gimmicky, but has its place as a strong option, especially if you pair it with a newly buffed Gunblade, which causes Thornmail's reflection damage to also heal your units. Lastly, we have Rabadons and Infinity Edge, which pretty much fill the same role. Pure damage. Rabadons being the stronger of the two, I find that using your item components to build these two items just isn't worth it when you can use the components to build S tier items such as Spear Shojin or Rage Blade. With that being said, if you have a surplus of needlessly large rods or BF swords, they are still a strong option. This next tier is a huge drop in value from the B tier items because pretty much every item from here on out is the equivalent of getting your items from the dollar store. For C tier, we have Cursed Blade, Hush, Swordbreaker, Ionic Spark, Guardian's Angel, Luden's Echo, and Runin's Hurricane. Cursed Blade, Hush, and Swordbreaker are the on-hit disable items, and they are average at best. They have their place in the right comps, especially Swordbreaker, which is quite strong when versus an Assassin or Gunslinger comp. I don't think that these items are particularly bad, but they are not the best usages of the components that build into them, and they really only work in a few key scenarios. For these on-hit disable items, I like to say building them is kind of like my first time having sex. It mostly sucked, but it got the job done. Ionic Spark is really only good if you build it into a full Sorcerer comp, due to how the damage procs on spell cast. Other than that, this item is pretty trash, but it does have some value in the right scenarios. Guardian's Angel and Renan's Hurricane both received buffs this patch, which is what moved them from the D tier to the C tier. Honestly, J could potentially be a B tier item, depending on how strong the unit star bonus is. However, from my experiences with it, I still find it to be pretty bad overall. Hurricane is also not much better, but it technically can be good on a champ like Graves, but it's not worth wasting a spatula on this item. These two items on patch 9.14 are basically just shit with Febreze sprayed on them. Lastly, we have Luden's Echo, which I almost feel bad putting this far down on the list because it's really not that bad, but in comparison to the other items you can build with a rod or a tier, you just will never build this item. Simply put, there are just better things to use these components for, and while the item itself is average, it's just not something you ever want to build. And finally, we reach the TFT Item Graveyard, also known as the D tier. These are the items I would almost never recommend building, and those items are Soda the Divine, Zephyr, Zeke's Herald, Redemption, and Locket of the Iron Solari. Realistically, if you ever build these items, you either misclicked and dragged them onto the wrong unit, or you have a split personality intent on sabotaging your TFT games. Sword of the Divine has a 5% chance to give you 100% crit, but when every champion already has a 15% chance to crit, why would you ever waste a BF sword and recurve bow on this item? I know some people think Zephyr is a good item, but it is only really decent in the very late game and is just more of a nuisance than anything. This is an item I literally only build at the end of the game if I can't use the components for anything else. Zeke's Herald and Locket now only apply to units in the same row as them. That being said, Locket stacking is no longer proficient and makes the item pretty bad in almost every case, which is a shame because it was extremely broken on 9.13. Same thing with Zeke's, except the bonus from Zeke's is just overall worse than the Locket bonus, so I would not recommend building either of these items on this next patch. Now for what I consider to be the worst item in the game. This item is basically the equivalent of getting your dick caught in a zipper. Redemption is by far the worst item in the game, and I just don't even feel like going into why. If you build Redemption, check yourself for a fever, because there might be something not right up there. And that concludes my tier list for items on patch 
I did not put most of the spatula items in here because they are mostly all situational and dependent on what your comp needs, so they are too versatile to be placed in any one tier on this list. This is my first time doing a tier list in this format, but I want to try and do more of these for every upcoming patch. In the future, I will probably make a video listing the strengths and weaknesses of every item, either for this patch or the upcoming patches as well. I will be playtesting all the time on PBE and keeping up to date with every new change, so if you want to stay updated, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I also know that there are other YouTubers and streamers that make similar videos to mine, and I want to continue to strive and be unique and original. So if you guys have any suggestions for how to improve my videos, or things you might want to see that you don't get from other channels, please let me know in the comments down below. But until next time, you've been electrified. <laughs>